All right, hello again, people. Um, my apologies. I'm getting this video out a little bit late, a little later than I had planned. Um, a day late. In fact, I apologize profusely. Uh, but here you go. This is the introduction to lab number three. And lab number three, uh, there's kind of two things that we need to do in lab number three. Um, lab number three is going to require you to get up and move around, uh, and I need you guys to get to school one day between now and the end of the weekend. I guess I'll, I'll even give you Monday of next week, uh, but next week's lab will drop on Monday. Uh, but hey, I was a day late getting it to you, so you get an extra day. Um, so the two things that we're going to do is we're going to get a little bit more familiar with using latitude and longitude to navigate uh, the real world, to navigate our surroundings. And the next, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to start to get our hands on some rocks and identify some samples. Um, I went back and forth on how to get some, some actual rock samples in your guys' hands. Uh, and I was, for a while, I was leaning towards mailing them to you. Um, but I didn't figure the post office would take kindly to that. And, um, you know, postage on a bunch of boxes of rocks would be kind of high. So. so this is the solution I came up with. I can't have you guys in the classroom to do a lab in person yet. So it is a an outdoor lab, a little scavenger hunt. So you have 10 samples and your job is to use the given latitude and longitude coordinates to navigate your way to those 10 samples. And then once you get to those 10 samples, you need to identify what kind of rock it is. Um, now we don't really have too much in the way of names for different types of rocks yet. That'll come later. Right now, the big thing that we want to do is decide whether it is igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic. I'm gonna give you some really simple tools that while they are not always they're not hard and fast rules. Um, they're a good rule of thumb, a good baseline way to guide your thinking on identifying rock type. So at each location, you will find a Ziploc bag. It's a large Ziploc bag. And in that Ziploc bag, you will find a rock sample and a hand lens, and a little note card that labels what sample it is. Um, I ask that you please leave the samples, of course, in the locations where they currently are. After you find them, put them back as you found them. And heads up, I didn't hide anything like crazy hard to find. Um, but it's a little bit like geocaching, if you've ever heard of geocaching. Uh, that's a hobby some people have. All over the world, there's these things called geocaches, which are basically just little, little uh, containers that are stashed in various places all over the world with some coordinates. And people will go out hunting these things as a uh, something to do it's kind of fun i know plenty of people who really enjoy geocaching i've never quite gotten into it but i bet it, i bet i could i bet it'd be pretty fun so first finding the samples navigating um in your lab document you have the locations of all the samples and you'll notice when you look at that document, the latitude and longitude 
are in degrees, minutes, and seconds, just like we've been using our math. Um, but you'll notice the seconds have a decimal place. So it won't just say, uh, it won't just say 35 seconds, it'll say 35.4 seconds. And this is important because uh, one second of latitude or longitude uh, works out to roughly 100 feet or so on the ground. Um, and so if you were just looking for, if, if our sensitivity on these measurements was just to seconds, you basically have about a 100 foot by 100 foot square in which each sample could be found. And I don't want you wandering around school all day long looking for these things. But if we have uh, even one decimal place of tenths of seconds, now we're talking about a 10 foot by 10 foot square. It's much more manageable. So what are you going to use to, to, to get your latitude and longitude? You've got a couple of options. Your first option the option that I recommend is that you download a free app, uh, free navigation app to your phone. Maybe you even have one already. Smartphones uh, are GPS units, uh, but you just need the right app for it to read out for uh, what we want. Um, the app that I recommend is in the uh, in the document. I think it's called a. Uh, Compass Commander Go, and it is it's free. It's for both Android and iPhone. Uh, it's got a lot of features that we don't need, but what it does have is latitude and longitude, and it will read out in degrees, minutes, and seconds with the tenth of the second. So what you'll do, if this is the way that you're going to do this, is you will go to either the App Store or the Google Play Store or whatever, download the app, and when you open it, uh, it does not initially display degrees, minutes, and decimal seconds. You have to, there's down in the lower right hand corner, there's a little circle with an I in it, and you go to settings, that's the settings button, and you open up the settings and um, and it's, it's uh, uh, grid units or map units or something. There's some setting in there where it, you can change it to DMS.X. DMS.X, which stands for degrees, minutes, seconds. Point X is the tenths of the seconds. So you get your app. You get it set up so that it reads out in degrees, minutes, and decimal seconds, and then you're ready to go. Um, and what you'll notice is as you walk to the north, watching your GPS, the longitude number will be increasing, which makes sense, right? Zero longitude, uh, or sorry, as you walk to the north, your latitude number will be increasing because zero degrees latitude is the equator and the closer to the North Pole you get the higher that latitude number gets. As you walk to the west towards the Columbia River, right? North is towards the Saddle Mountains. It's toward the soccer fields if you're in the building. Uh, as you walk towards the west or towards the Columbia River you'll see that your longitude number will increase because we're in the western hemisphere and the further west you get from the prime meridian, the greater your longitude number is. Um, maybe you have a different navigation app on your phone already that gives you your decimal seconds and you don't want to add another one. That's fine. I don't care what you use. Um, some navigation apps 
have the longitude as north and east all the time. And if that's the case, your longitude number, it'll, it'll read exactly the same, except it will have a negative sign in front of it, because it'll be negative 119 degrees to the east, but negative to that way is that way. Okay, so you got your app on your phone, you've got it all set up for degrees, minutes, decimal seconds, you're off and running. Uh, maybe you don't have a phone. Maybe you don't want to put any apps on your phone. Maybe you don't have any data da to download an app. I don't know. There's another option. Um, in my classroom, on the windowsill, next to the window that I always leave unlatched for you to grab your green books if you haven't already, is a small handheld GPS unit. Uh, it's yellow. It's also in a Ziploc bag, and it has a fairly straightforward set of instructions that I made and left in that Ziploc bag as well. Uh, so you can use that. If you would prefer to use the Garmin GPS unit in my classroom, just go around to my window, pull open my window, reach in, grab the bag, grab the Garmin out of there, follow the instructions, you're off and running. Uh, if you're going to use that, there's also a little bag of wipes in there, package of wipes. Once you're done, wipe it down, stick it back in the bag, stick it back where you got it, you're good to go. Okay, so that's the navigation part. I know some of you are going to have some questions on this, and you can email me or text or whatever, I don't care. <coughs> uh, okay, so now the rock identification part. Um, we're looking for three things. Well, we're looking to see if it's one of three things. Is it igneous? Is it sedimentary? Or is it metamorphic? I'll give you some quick tools, and those tools are actually kind of lined out on your uh, lab sheet as well. The first thing you're going to look at is the minerals. The minerals that make up the rock. <coughs> Excuse me. When you look close enough at any rock, you'll see it's made up of little bits and pieces, little, little, uh, well, little minerals. Um, and those minerals can tell us a lot. So the first question on the for each sample, the first question is, are the minerals fresh or dull? Fresh or dull? And what we really mean there, what do we mean when we say fresh? Well, just like in our uh, Yakima River uh, virtual field trip video, fresh minerals, uh, what we're looking for is, are they like really sparkly? If you have a rock that is full of pretty sparkly minerals, such as, such as this right here, sparkly, ooh, um, you are, chances are good that you are looking at either an igneous rock or a metamorphic rock sedimentary rocks tend to be, not always, but tend to be fairly dull. Um, and, and you're kind of looking big picture. If the, if the thing is mostly dull, and there's just a couple little sparkles in there, if you look really hard, call it dull. If it's mostly sparkly, but there's a couple of spots that don't really do much when you look at them, call it fresh. Um, sunny days are the best days to do this because sunlight, natural sunlight is the best light uh, to observe individual minerals and look at the sparkliness of them. Um, and depending on the size of the minerals, you might want to use a hand lens. There's
the hand lens with each and every sample. I have one right here. The ones in the sample bags look different than this one, but they work the same. So I'm going to demonstrate right now how to use a hand lens when looking at the minerals in a rock. I am not, I repeat not, going to do this. I'm not going to hold it like this. I'm going to get that hand lens right up next to my eye. Right up next to my eye. And then I'm going to get the rock as close as I need to to be able to see those individual minerals. And it's going to be pretty darn close. Right now, I can feel this hand lens brushing against my eyelashes. That's how close to my eye this thing is. And I can barely fit my finger between the hand lens and the rock. Couple of um, couple of tips here. Stand, don't stand um, with your back to the sun, because if you're standing with your back to the sun while you're looking at your rock under a hand lens, you're going to be in your own shadow. You want that sunlight coming down and shining on the part of the rock that you're looking at. Um, and then the other thing is you want to kind of move it around so that the sunlight can catch those little shiny surfaces. If you just look at one angle, you won't see what you'll see if you move it around a little bit. Okay, so that's fresh or dull. If it's sparkly, you can probably rule out sedimentary. Um, you know that it might actually be the second one. I'm not looking at that paper right now, so I think that was the second one. I think the first one is random or organized. And that's, uh, that one can be kind of tricky too. So, what do I mean by random or organized? At first glance, it might seem like they're all random. But there are certain things that we can look for in a rock. And if we can see any pattern at all, then that means there's some kind of organization. Now that pattern might be thin layers. It might be thick layers. Um, it might not be layers at all, but it could just be that you notice one type of mineral is always kind of pointed in the same direction. Anything like that would be considered organized. Random is completely random. You can't pick out which minerals are going to be next to each other. They're pointing in all different directions. Mm -mm. Random tends to be kind of splotchy. Organized tends to be in layers. If it is random, randomly organized, that's a poor choice of words, isn't it? If it is random, if your minerals are in a random orientation, you are probably looking at an igneous rock, especially if they are random and they are sparkly. If it's random orientations of fresh, sparkly minerals, you probably got an igneous rock. Not always, but probably. For our purposes for this lab, yes. Um, organized, again, if there's any kind of layers. Um, maybe all the dark minerals are together, and then all the light minerals are together, and then all the dark minerals are together. That would be a different kind of layering. Uh, any kind of organization at all not going to be igneous. Um, so, if it's random and fresh, 
then you're probably looking at uh, igneous. If it is dull, you're probably looking at sedimentary. If it is fresh, sparkly minerals, but they are in some sort of organized pattern, then you're looking at a metamorphic rock. A couple other, um, well, one other big one is uh, if you find any fossils in a rock, guaranteed you're looking at a sedimentary rock. Uh, the process, uh, the heat and pressure of metamorphosis and the heat of the magma that an igneous rock is before it cools destroy anything that would create a fossil. So in order to create fossils you need low enough temperature to preserve whatever is being fossilized. <clears throat> Let me double check this uh, lab sheet here one time and make sure um, yeah, fresh or dull minerals, random or organized minerals, should give you igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic. Now, one last little thing. Know this before you go into it so that you don't have to go back to any samples. Um, for verification, and so I can just see your lovely faces, as part of this lab, um, I need a selfie. And I need a selfie of you. Uh, that is what a selfie is. Good job, Dermont. Um, I need a selfie uh, with a certain sample. And the way you will decide which sample you are taking a selfie with is you will take your birth date, month, day, and year, and you will add up all of the digits you will continue to add up all of the digits until you uh, reach a number between 1 and 10. And that is the sample you will take a selfie with. So for example, my birthday, 3-7-1980. So I would add 3 plus 7 plus 1 plus 9 plus 8 plus 0, which gives me 28. That's not a number between 1 and 10, so then I would take 2 and 8, and I would add those together. 28, 2, 8. Add those together, and I get 10. So when I do this lab, which I don't have to do, I actually did this lab when I was, oh, damn near 20 years ago now, um, without the selfie when I did it. But... Um, so if I were doing this lab, my number would be 10, so I would get to sample number 10, and I'd say, oh, I gotta get my, get my phone and my, my rock, and I'll take a selfie. I'm going to drop that in the document um, when I turn this in as well. Uh, so that's about it. Navigation rock identification, selfie with a sample. Um, as always, email me if you've got any questions. And for this one, and moving forward, we're not accepting any more late labs. So don't put it off. Find a time to get up to campus to do this. I promise you it should be, it should be fun. You can, you know, you can get a, a, a class buddy, um, come up and do it together. I don't care um, if you're going to work together on this. Please wear your masks um, and be responsible. Take care of yourselves. And that's it. I didn't think this video was going to last 25 minutes, but here we are. Um, I'll stop talking now. Good luck on your lab, and we'll see you in class.